Hi, I'm Trevor with Hyvis Shooting Systems. We're going to install a set of sights on a uh, Smith & Wesson Shield EZ9. And first we want to, of course, make sure that the gun is unloaded. And you do not necessarily have to take the gun apart to install the sights, but I prefer to. That way we get a much better hold on the slide when we remove the front dovetail sight. This particular gun, the rear sight is only held in place with a screw that you access from the underside of the slide. So we remove and we'll reuse that screw for the replacement sight. And the rear sight on this particular model is a slip fit because it has a screw that retains a sight. So our H3 will slide right in place freely and we will replace the screw on the underside of the slide. Now this particular sight has a slot in the slide where that retainer screw goes so you can adjust it side to side. So I'm going to use a dial indicator and I'm going to go to one side of the sight base and zero my indicator and then flip it over and check the other side so I'm one thousandth off center that's pretty good for a guess. So we're going to leave it there and tighten the retainer screw in the rear sight down. And the screw, the factory screw has a thread locker, a patch lock on the screw so there's no need for any extra thread locker and that's all there is for the rear sight so that's an easy installation as, as handgun sights go. Now we will remove and replace the front sight. So I'm going to mount the slide in a vise. You can use any number of methods to do this. You can put, uh, you, you want to make sure that you have a vise that doesn't have any teeth on the jaws. You want a smooth, smooth jaw vise. These are actually a, uh, a lead jaw on these, but I'm going to use a wood block to protect the slide. So you can clamp down on a slide reasonably tight. You don't want to go too tight. You will, on some models, collapse it. So I'm going to use a steel punch, which I never use to install sights. I'm going to put a piece of tape over it to protect it. The hammer that I use is actually a chasing hammer for metal engraving. And I use it because usually I'm looking at the sight, not the hammer, and the head's quite large, so I have a harder time missing the punch. And I'm going to drive towards the jaw on the vise. And there we go, we've removed the front sight. We're going to move forward with fitting uh, the front sight, the high vis H3 front sight. So first I want to see if the sight starts in the dovetail at all and it starts a little ways. So we're going to attempt to drift it in and see how much pressure it takes. So I did use a steel punch to remove the other sight. I highly discourage people from using a steel punch to continue to use that or to install the new sight. We have a lot of options for punches. You can use a brass punch. Keep in mind that a lot of times brass will transfer to the sight so I usually put tape over the tip of those to protect them. So when I install sights, if they're properly fitted, they don't need a tremendous amount of pressure to drift them into place. So I prefer to use a nylon tip punch. This one here has replaceable nylon tips that just simply unscrew out of the punch. It will take more force to drive it in with this, but if it's fit properly, this will still be adequate to drift the sight in place and you, will, you won't hurt or scratch a gun. There's really no possibility of that. So now that the, we've checked that the sight does fit in the dovetail slightly, I'm just going to tap it. So I've got it drifted and it's just a little bit off, but I'm starting to feel resistance from the site where I'm gonna to have to use more force to drift it into place. So this is the point where I would stop and I wanna back the site out and I wanna reduce the dovetail. The amount of force I started with where the site started drifting into the dovetail was not a tremendous amount of force, but that is the amount of force I want to continue steadily through the whole installation process. So since I had to start increasing my force, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna reduce the dovetail slightly. So here is the sight that I previously did slight fitting with a file on. So I'm going to get it to where it starts in the gun. So now we just drift the sight in place. Try to center it up as best we can. Now we're going to take the sight to the dial indicator, check the uh, centering of it, and adjust it as necessary. So I'm going to set the indicator on the side of the blade, zero it, and then we will check the other side. And we are about 15,000 soft, so we're going to make a slight adjustment. So I like to position the slide in the vise that the direction I need to move the sight, I'm always driving into the fixed portion of the vise. That's why I have the slide reversed. So I want to only drive on the dovetail of the sight. So I've moved the sight just a little. Now we're going to check it again. All right, so I've made a slight adjustment. We'll zero the Dial indicator on that side, check the other side, we are 2,000 soft, which is 
close enough to being center. We can't get much more, much closer than that. So that's it for the installation on this 9EZ. Now we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the gun, put in the barrel, guide rod. Make sure it functions properly. And there you have your installed sights on the 9EZ.